this array uh, from the recent past, so the, from, from the remote ones. And it's all about basically three generations of artists that moved to Italy from the Dutch um, Republic. And the first generation um, is only a few people who go in the early 1600s and, and start experimenting with what they've got. Uh, in front of them and playing with it. But then it's the second generation that's the really important one. And those are the artists represented in the exhibition here. Um, they are, as I said, from around the 1650s. And they all move there and develop a very closely uh, connected community. They all live near the Spanish steppes, like every other city in Europe at this point. The national communities also start living close to each other. And so you, you have these sort of pockets of, of, of different countries living in, in different places. And so the Spanish steps become the, the key place where they, where they live. And they all start um, leading a very sort of happy life there. There's, there's this idea that you know, they're all, in a way, escaping from the constraints of Protestant, strip laced Republic kind of ideas of, 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 of the Dutch Republic at this point. And once they get to Rome, um, they go wild. And they start having nicknames, very, very um, wild parties with lots of alcohol involved. They all start wearing Roman togas and dress up as ancient Romans. I mean, you get this idea of these people that sort of, you know, young people, they're all in their 20s, they're all very young. They all kind of go wild in Rome. I sometimes feel that Rome in the 17th century was a kind of northern sort of Europe. But um, notwithstanding the sort of underbelly of social life, they obviously found um, what was around them very, very interesting, and it kind of helped them develop um, a romantic and picturesque view of, of the world around them. They love the countryside, and of course there is this interesting setup where the countryside outside Rome is beautiful, it's poetic, it's romantic, it's full of ruins, but it's also very dangerous. Um, there are brigands, um, not quite pirates, but almost, um, and of course they also have, um, there, there's malaria, and it's very dangerous to spend a night out in the Roman Campagna at this point. People don't just go there and have picnics and spend a weekend in the countryside. Um, countryside is dangerous. And so these young artists are very adventurous. I mean, they're setting out there to sketch, to paint, and to come back. Uh, of course, all of their paintings are then done back in the studio. The idea of painting in plein air outside is something much more modern, something that starts in the 19th century, in the 1800s. Before that, no one would even think of painting outside. Um, but they went out and they sketched, and they often did it as a group. Um, they did not quite invent the idea about outdoor landscape. I mean, other people had been experimenting with this beforehand. And I show you here um, one of the first examples of you know, simple landscape. I mean, we now have lived with hundreds of years of tradition of landscapes. But by the 17th century, this was a fairly new thing. Not many people painted landscapes. If you had a scene with a very prominent landscape, it was always um, historical scene of some kind, a mythological, religious scene uh, which represented something. I mean, a picture has to represent something, something has to be going on in it. The idea of just representing the countryside with shepherds is a mad idea until the 17th century. So people who are experimenting with this earlier in the 17th century are people like Adam Elsheimer, who I'll show you here. Um, this is a picture that's um, known as Dawn, Aurora, and it's just a picture of sort of early morning in the Roman Campagna with a shepherd on the left. Um, partly damaged in that area, you can't really see it very well. But he's one of the first pioneers of this art, and he's German, he's from Frankfurt. But he moves to Rome in the early 1600s and dies there in the 16 teens, very, very young. He's in his late 20s, early 30s when he dies. But this becomes, Elsheimer is one of the um, first people to push uh, the boundaries. And so this is then taken up by Dutch artists. And one of the artists from the first generation that goes to Italy is Cornelius von Polenberg. And this is the one picture in the exhibition, which is the earliest picture in the whole exhibition, and um, the only one that represents this first um, generation. And again, what, he, what Polenberg does in this oval painting from around 1627 is he represents, again, Italian countryside, the, the hills, the, 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 the pine trees that you see on the right, from that rocky, rocky outcrop, but also the ruins. There are these ruins down in the valley, and then shepherds and, and, and flocks of sheep and, 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 and cows and so on in the foreground. But also there's two, well, there's three figures on the left um, of a man, a woman, and a child, um, which are dressed in historical outfits. Um, those are sort of fancy dress um, 
meant to sort of represent something going on there. And we don't quite know what the scene represents, but this is not a pure landscape. There's something going on. And, and this was probably recognized at the time as a scene from a mythological book, uh, a, a play. But we don't quite know because we haven't been able to recognize what the scene represents. But it was meant to represent something. So it, it, it's, it's a story of something set in a landscape. The idea of a, of a landscape with no story is something that only develops later. And so you see here, 10 years later, 1633, uh, Carol de Hoog, who's another uh, Dutch Italian artist, and this, these again are two little pictures, we'll see the second one in a minute, um, which are down in the exhibition. But you get this idea again of the wonderful valley, the, the rocks, the, the, the light, and, and the peasants again. And what you see on the left is a recognizable building. This is the circular temple known as the Temple of Vesta, the Temple of the Sibyl, the Temple of Venus. No one's ever quite sure who the temple is dedicated to, which is on a rocky outcrop in Tivoli, just outside Rome. And this is one of the locations where people, I mean, not only Dutch painters, but all sorts of painters go to after the 19th century. And it's one of the most romantic sites outside Rome with waterfalls and, and forests and, and this wonderful temple. And the little pair, again, you have these ruins, um, but then these wonderful, you know, the cows, um, the, 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 the little boy in the foreground. And my favorite detail about this picture is actually um, the group of people um, putting laundry out in the sun to dry. So again, a very sort of day-to-day -day scene. The only picture in the show and, and in the collection of Dalish which shows a specific place um, is this one by Herman von Spanerveld. Again, another Dutch artist. Here we are, second generation. So these are the artists that are going to Rome, spending time in Rome. Spanerveld is um, one of the most interesting ones. He's one of the few of these Dutch artists that actually mixes with contemporary artists from other countries. And it's very interesting what's going on around him in Rome. And he actually Italianized his name. He's Herman, but he's then known in Italy as Hermano. And, um, and kind of spent several years there. And at one point, he becomes um, a flatmate of Claude Logan, the great landscape artist from France. And the two work very closely together. Um, curiously enough, this one painting, which is a recognizable scene, which, to be honest, hasn't changed a huge amount um, since, since then, since the 17th century, uh, wasn't actually painted at Rome. This is sign and dated, and we know this was painted in 1645, by which point Svanevelt had moved from Rome to Paris and was working for the French king, and then spent the rest of his life in France. So this is done in Paris. And the way he could paint this so accurately is partly through drawings. I mean, these artists would have gone back to Holland. They went to Rome, they stayed there two, three, five, maximum 10 years, returned back home, or went somewhere else like Svanevelt in Paris, and then used the, the drawings that they'd accumulated while they were in Italy as inspiration for what they were doing. And so this is no doubt based on a drawing. What's so wonderful about this is that this gives you an idea of day-to-day -day life in Rome as these artists would have seen it. Now what you see here is the Arch of Constantine, um, what the, the third great triumphal arch um, which still stands in Rome. What you see to the right is the um, end of the hill of the Palatine going down into the Forum. And just beyond the frame of the picture, you have the Forum. Um, and then you see medieval buildings built attached to the arch. If you go and see the arch today, of course, it's, 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 it's an individual building, doesn't have anything around it, because all these later things have been demolished. Of course, you see how overgrown the arch is as well, and, and of course, all of that has been removed. And, and this idea of sort of romantic, overgrown ruin is something that doesn't exist anymore in Rome. But the wonderful thing you see in, in this painting are all the characters, the figures. And so you have. Um, aristocratic ladies and men, and there's more strolling over here, two um, um, very well-dressed men there, the woman probably with a servant at the back. Um, you then get pilgrims here, they have pilgrim staffs, and they have shells, which were one of the symbols of pilgrims at the time. Um, poor people, probably beggars here in the corner, and then most wonderful of all, you have a group of artists sketching, sitting here. So this is sort of Vanderbilt, in a way, recollecting his time in Rome and how it's three of them. They're all sitting together, sketching different sides of the same building. Uh, the other wonderful thing about this painting